When people think of bear attacks, the first thing in mind is that it's done by a grizzly or polar bear, since they are by far the most aggressive out of all bears. However, that doesn't make other bear species less dangerous, and today's case is the gruesome attack of an unusual yet very aggressive bear species on a journalist named Sarah Williams. Sarah Williams, a 27-year-old journalist, is embarking on an exciting journey to the Indian countryside of Mysore. Her mission? To document the daily lives of the locals, gather information on their sources of income, and gain insights into their everyday experiences. Through her work, Sarah hopes to shed light on the unique living conditions of rural communities worldwide and broaden her understanding of diverse cultures. When she arrived in India, she was guided by another journalist from Mysore named Anya into the region's countryside. As they reached the area, Sarah was warmly greeted by Anya's family and her neighbors from when she was still living here during her college days. Everyone was pleased to have Sarah in their village and even accommodated her for her temporary stay here. After eating and chatting with the locals there, Sarah formally asked permission from Anya's father, Abhir, if they would allow her to document and take footage of the village's everyday life and interview them for necessary information needed for her documentation. Abhir cheerfully agreed and was even eager to share their life with Sarah. Sarah was accommodated into a cabin just within the village. The village was situated in a meadow beside a farm partially surrounded by a forest. The scenery is very calm, and Sarah always gets to breathe fresh air whenever she decided to sit outside her cabin and talk to the children and teenagers about their school life. She wasn't used to this lifestyle, but she appreciated how calm and relaxing it would be when she was here. In the next couple of days, Sarah was toured by Anya's brothers into the place to help her with her documentation and share their everyday lives. They would sometimes tour Sarah into the forest beside the farm, or teach her how to make traditional Indian snacks, or speak some words from their local language. Sarah's first week in the countryside seems calming, but something, or someone, has been bugging her for days. Sometimes, in the middle of the night, Sarah would hear scratching and bumping sounds outside her wooden cabin. She might sometimes hear noises from the wooden door, which may sound like someone or something trying to open her cabin. She didn't dare to mention this concern to Anya or the other villagers, since she didn't want to blame anyone. However, there was one time when Sarah couldn't take it anymore, since she couldn't focus on reading a book late at night due to the noises. Sarah was quietly reading a book when she heard the noises again. The noises were frequent. She had gotten used to it and thought it was a wild animal trying to break into homes for food. But this time it's even louder and more forceful and disturbing her during her reading time. Sarah stood up from her bed and dropped her book angrily before heading to the door. She takes a deep breath before widely opening the door, letting the cool midnight breeze hit her instantly. Sarah was mad and nervous just by feeling how cold it was outside as she was waiting for something, such as an animal, to break into the cabin and attack her. Fortunately, there was no sign of a wild animal or a person outside. She even took a few steps forward to check what it was and saw nothing. She thought that perhaps it was because of her lack of sleep that she heard noises all night. Sarah decided to close the door and head to her bed to sleep after peeking outside. She just decided to continue reading her book the next day. When the next day came, the villagers took Sarah to a marketplace to teach her how to shop for ingredients using the basic local language. With this kind of activity, Sarah eventually forgets about her creepy encounter from last night. After a long day of discoveries about the lifestyle of the villagers, Sarah heads to her cabin to rest at night. She's been exhausted from all the documentation she did for the day, so she needs to sleep to prepare for her last day at the village tomorrow. However, she hears the strange noises again. Sarah tries to brush it off just like she used to, especially since she saw no wild animal last night when she went to check it out. As she tried tucking herself into bed, the noises became louder than last night which annoyed her more. Sarah madly stood up from her bed again and headed to the door, opening it in an instant. As soon as she opened the door, she expected nothing. 
However, this would be her biggest mistake. As she opened the door, she saw an adult sloth bear in front of the cabin, staring at her directly. Anya and the others had already told her about the sloth bear, but this was the first time she had seen one in person. The bear was huge for its kind and didn't look that friendly to Sarah. Sarah decided to close the door for her safety, but it was too late. The bear growled before charging towards her and tackling her down to the floor of the cabin. She screamed for the others to hear as the bear went on top of her, scratching her face and chest with its sharp claws. Sarah tried her best to defend herself by punching and pushing the bear away, but it was more evidence that the bear had twice her strength than hers. The bear continued to attack her by biting her head and shoulders and clawing her face, neck, and arms. Her chest was bloody due to the wounds when the bear scratched her face again, but her eye was scratched this time. Sarah cried out in excruciating pain as she tried to push the bear away with all the strength left in her body. As she was still getting attacked by the bear, Abir and Anya's three brothers finally arrived and entered the cabin to attack the bear with their bare hands. They beat up the bear easily until it decided to run away from the cabin, leaving Sarah severely wounded on the floor. They immediately took her to a hospital where she needed intensive care for her wounds and injuries. Doctors said one of her eyes won't function well for the rest of her life and needed surgery to avoid infection. But after all of the damage made to Sarah's body, she miraculously survived the deadly attack from the vicious sloth bear. Dennis had been a lifelong hunter, having grown up in the wilderness and learned the art of tracking and hunting from his father. He had taken down deer, elk, and even the occasional mountain lion throughout his hunting career, but he had yet to hunt the ultimate game, a grizzly bear. For Dennis, this was the ultimate test of a hunter's skill and courage, and he was determined to prove himself worthy of this challenge. He had been tracking a grizzly for several days now. He had followed its trail through the dense forest, over rocky outcroppings, and across rivers. He had seen evidence of the bear's presence everywhere, claw marks on trees, overturned rocks, and piles of scat. He knew he was getting closer and could feel the adrenaline pumping through his veins. Finally, he spotted the bear in a clearing up ahead. It was massive, with shaggy fur and sharp claws. It was digging through the earth, searching for roots and insects. Dennis could feel his heart pounding in his chest as he raised his rifle and took aim. He was a good shot and knew he could take the bear down with a single shot. He squeezed the trigger, but nothing happened. The gun had jammed and he was left defenseless as the grizzly turned and charged toward him. Dennis tried to reload his weapon, but it was too late. The bear was upon him and he could feel its hot breath on his face. He had never been so close to a grizzly before, and he could see the anger and determination in its eyes. Dennis had been in tight spots before, but had never felt as helpless as he did now. He had no idea how to defend himself against a grizzly. He tried to back away, but the bear was too fast. It swiped at him with its massive paw, knocking him to the ground. Dennis could feel the bear's claws digging into his flesh, tearing through his clothes, and drawing blood. He tried to fight back, kicking and punching the bear with all his might, but it was useless. The bear was too strong and too determined. Dennis could feel his consciousness slipping away as the bear mauled him. He thought this was the end, but suddenly, the bear stopped attacking and ran away. Dennis lay there on the ground in shock and pain. He could barely move, and he knew that he was badly injured. He could feel the blood flowing from his wounds, knowing he needed medical attention immediately. He managed to reach for his radio and call for help. He knew that he was lucky to be alive, and he was grateful for the quick response of the rescue team. It took several hours for the rescue team to reach Dennis's location. They found him lying on the ground, barely conscious and badly injured. They knew he needed immediate medical attention and airlifted him to the nearest hospital. Dennis spent several weeks in the hospital recovering from his injuries. He had suffered multiple lacerations and bruises, and his left arm had been badly broken. 
But despite his injuries, he knew he was lucky to be alive. He had come face to face with a grizzly bear and survived. After he was discharged from the hospital, Dennis knew that he could never go back to hunting again. He realized he had been foolish to think he could take on a grizzly bear with just a rifle. He knew he had been lucky to survive, but he also knew that he had put himself in danger for no good reason. Dennis advocated for bear safety and started volunteering with the local conservation group. He wanted to educate others about the dangers of hunting grizzly bears and the importance of preserving their habitat. He knew that he had to make a mark on others and encourage them to be more aware of their surroundings, especially when they were in bear territories. And he always reminded them to learn how to defend themselves when the time called for it. The story is about a hiker named Eleanor Lewis and her son Caleb Lewis. Their morning journey on a Wyoming hiking trail ended in disaster. Eleanor was a hiker for more than 20 years and has been teaching her 16-year-old son Caleb for a while now. The two have been on different hiking trips, serving as their mother and son bonding. For their morning hike, they decided to go on a Wyoming hiking trail, which is famous for frequent bear sightings. At first, Caleb was skeptical about the hike as he knew that they could have an encounter with a bear later on. He suggested they bring two cans of bear spray to prepare for a potential bear attack, which Eleanor did right after being told by Caleb. As they started their morning hike, Eleanor and Caleb had a great time. They brought cameras to take pictures of the environment and footage of some wildlife they had encountered on their way. It was a peaceful morning hike until they stumbled upon a meadow and spotted a giant grizzly bear with its cubs in the distance. The two strolled in the meadow as they watched the mother grizzly take care of its cubs. Caleb wanted to turn back, but his mother, Eleanor, insisted they continue on the trail since the bears would follow them. Caleb grew nervous and picked up his bear spray just in case. Eleanor and Caleb tried their best to walk slowly and not make noise, as grizzly bears have excellent hearing. As unfortunate as they could get, Eleanor stepped on a pile of leaves, causing the mother grizzly to look at them. The two froze at their place instantly as the bear made eye contact with them while slowly approaching. Caleb started to scream and make noises to let the bear know that he was human, hoping to make it back away and return to its cubs. Unfortunately, the bear became agitated and began charging in his direction. They started rushing in the direction the bear was coming from out of panic. When Caleb saw the bear approaching, he charged it with bear spray before attacking his mother, Eleanor. Eleanor screamed as the bear tackled her face first down on the ground and began biting her arms and backpack. Caleb grabbed the nearest wooden stick he could find and poked the bear right in the eye, which made the bear growl in pain and get off Eleanor. The bear spray also took effect as the bear kept growling in discomfort. Seconds later, it backed away and disappeared from the two of them. Caleb helped his wounded mother stand up as the two struggled to hike back to where they had started. Even though Eleanor suffered from wounds, cuts, and lacerations from the bear's attack, she is still thankful that she could make it home alive despite the terrifying encounter. Gemma is a famous YouTube personality known for her paranormal adventures and scary supernatural encounters. She goes to haunted, abandoned, or spooky places to discover whether supernatural beings are real and prove them with footage. For her newest scary adventure, she decides to feature the Appalachian Mountains and its never-ending saga of folklore and legends. Her recent goal was common, to find out whether Bigfoot is real. She arrived at the Appalachian Mountains with other explorers Paxton and Gracie, who will accompany her for a three-day trip to prove that Bigfoot exists. After hiking for hours, the three arrived at an abandoned cabin in the woods and decided they should stay there for the rest of their trip. It's also an excellent place to camp since it's in the middle of the forest and it's even more possible to spot a potential supernatural being in a spot like that. On the first day of their trip, Gemma, Paxton, and Gracie explored the woods in daylight 
while recording all their exploration on the footage. So far, there were no signs of any strange supernatural beings. After hours and hours of exploring, they returned to their cabin at night and decided to end their video. The three have discussed whether they should go at night in hopes of finding more evidence or save all their plans for tomorrow. Gemma decided they should all get some rest as they would be exploring tomorrow at both daylight and night for tomorrow's footage to gather more evidence and explore the woods even further. After the discussion, the three of them drifted off to sleep. Paxton and Gracie immediately fell asleep while Gemma was bothered by the sound of the cabin door creaking open. The cabin door is slightly faulty and opens even with a bit of wind blowing against it and it makes a sound when it creaks open. That's why Gemma couldn't fall asleep as the door was getting loud. Suddenly, heavy footsteps could be felt against the cabin's wooden floor. Paxton and Gracie were still asleep while Gemma stood up to find out what it was. Since there's only an emergency light providing light in their cabin, Gemma had a hard time recognizing who or what this creature is. The footsteps became heavier, indicating that it was fast approaching. Gemma tiptoed to her bag to grab her camera to try and record everything. She believes that this creature is Bigfoot, given that its footsteps are heavy and its figure is enormous. As Gemma was recording on her camera, she found it hard to determine what type of creature it was, especially that it's black and was breathing heavily. Gemma wants the animal to show itself, so she thinks of a way to disturb it. Gemma shouts at the creature, waking up Paxton and Gracie. Gemma signaled the two that they shouldn't make any other movements since there was a creature inside the cabin that she couldn't identify. The two remained seated on the floor as Gemma shouted at the beast again. The creature stopped walking for a moment, staring directly at Gemma in the dark. Gemma shouted again, but the beast charged at her and tackled her down to the wooden floor, inducing panic in Paxton and Gracie. As Gemma looked at the creature, it was not Bigfoot, but a giant black bear, unusually massive. Gemma screams at Paxton and Gracie that it's a black bear, which terrifies them. The bear started to claw Gemma's face, arms, torso, and lower body. As she struggled to get out of its grip, Paxton and Gracie tried to throw their bags at the bear, but they got clawed and scratched by the aggressive animal. The black bear continued to attack Gemma, and Gemma's camera fell to the floor and was nowhere to be seen now. Paxton and Gracie began shouting at the bear, making other loud noises by stomping on the wooden floor to scare the bear away. The bear growled loudly as it tried to bite Gemma's arm, causing her to scream. Paxton tried to smash things on the bear's head, but always got scratched until Gracie grabs a flare gun from her bag. Without hesitation, Gracie fired the flare gun at the cabin's chimney, which made the bear flinch. She stomped on the floor to scare the bear even more until it decided to run away back into the woods. Gemma was left severely wounded and unconscious. Even though it was late at night, Paxton and Gracie decided to hike back to their vehicle to take Gemma to the nearest hospital. Gemma survived the attack, but had to stay for a long time in the hospital to recover. She decided to close her channel in the meantime, as she will not be doing any videos until she's fully healed. Elizabeth Murray our next story takes us south of Montana to Wyoming, a state with over 4,000 lakes and excellent sights to see. Elizabeth Murray was a 26-year-old college graduate working at her local post office near Wilson, Montana. She intended to start with a few years of experience and then move to a bigger city for more profitable opportunities. In her spare time, she would often get together with her friends on weekends to visit neighboring towns and do whatever they wanted to relax, be it drinking, the circus, or sports. On April 13, 2007, while enjoying coffee with her friends Jackie and Albert, the latter proposed that they rent out some ATVs and take them up to Phillips Ridge for fun. The prospect sounded exciting, but Jackie and Elizabeth did not have the proper experience with ATVs to do that. Albert assured them that he could show them the basics and they could take all the time they wanted and that it was easier than they thought. They said that they would think about it. The next day, Albert asked them about it again, and Elizabeth said they had decided to try it out. 
Albert was overjoyed and told Elizabeth that he had already booked the ATVs on a hunch. Later in the day, Elizabeth made her way to the edge of town, where Jackie was already waiting for Albert. They both saw him coming from down the road on a single ATV, and they admitted among themselves that it did look fun. The two of them squeezed onto Albert's ATV as he took them up the ridge to the point where the other two were set. Albert dismounted and said that he would teach them the basics first. After some practice and a few mistakes, the girls quickly grasped the basics of ATV riding and were easily speeding across the ridge. Since they decided to take on the experience later than ideal, they figured they could stay on the ridge until nightfall and have some food. The trio zoomed across the pass on the ridge, relishing the rush of adrenaline and the thrill of speed as the hours flew by. Before they knew it, the sun had started to set and it got dark, so they decided to take a few more laps before heading home. Tired and unfocused, Elizabeth veered off the track accidentally and hit the side of a large tree, sending her flying down a hill and into the underbrush, lost in stray branches and logs. Albert and Jackie immediately noticed her fall, sped to her location, parked the ATVs, and looked down the hill. Elizabeth had fallen approximately 50 yards down the steep hill. At the bottom of the hill, Elizabeth groggily tried to get up from the logs, but a tremendous pain shot through her leg as she realized it was broken above the knee. She screamed in pain, unable to move, pinned under the logs piled at the bottom of the hill. She had no way of freeing herself. Each movement she made caused her leg to shock her body with more pain. With no means of escape and daylight dwindling, she screamed for her friends to tell them where she was. They responded kindly, and Albert shouted for her to remain calm as they called for help. He handed his phone to Jackie, who called 911, and went in the direction of the town to bring them to Elizabeth. In the meantime, Albert decided to slowly scale down the hill and see if he could help his friend. Elizabeth sensed movement within the tangle of logs and saw a dark shape through the foliage. As it got closer, a smell intensified, and she could clearly see her visitor. It was a black bear. The beast wasn't as big as some as she had seen before, but it was still imposing and uncomfortably close. As the bear loomed closer, it started sniffing the logs inches away from Elizabeth's face. As it figured out that Elizabeth was a potential meal, it pushed the logs with its paws, but they just pressed on her more, adding to the pain in her leg. Thinking quickly, Elizabeth grabbed a sharp stick beside her and thrust it through the mass of logs directly into the bear's eye. It staggered back and roared, clawing at the logs and making some way to reach her. She screamed in retaliation and kept thrusting the stick into the bear, but it wasn't letting up. To her horror, the bear managed to push its paw through the wood and claw her across her broken leg. She shrieked as the bear's claws ground against her bone, gushing blood all over her leg. At the top of her pain, she heard some commotion from up the hill and realized it was her friends coming to her aid. Albert was accompanied by two paramedics and a police officer who spotted the bear first and swiftly shot it in the shoulder with a rifle. It struggled to pull its paw from the mass of logs, but managed and approached the rescue party. A second shot deterred the bear and scared it off, giving the crew the precious opportunity of getting to Elizabeth. Albert and two of the men made an effort to move some of the logs just enough for one of the paramedics to get through and tend to her leg. When he disinfected it and stopped the bleeding, they all started heaving the logs away. This was a long and painful ordeal for Elizabeth as she felt every weight shift on her mangled leg. This was made no better by the adrenaline in her system letting up and worsening the pain. Eventually, however, the group cleared the logs and carefully carried Elizabeth up the hill. She stabilized when they carried her to the waiting ambulance and was admitted to the nearest hospital. Her friends stayed with her, and they profusely apologized for suggesting the ATVs and for staying out for so long. Elizabeth was understanding and did not blame her friends in the slightest. However, she did vow never to sit on an ATV again. 
Orlando had been working at the convenience store for over a year and had never encountered anything unusual. He had been working here mainly to save enough funds for his studies at the university since he's been living alone with his family in another state. Despite being all alone, Orlando was thankful to have his friends at the university and the other staff in the convenience store who were there for him. Even though his family is far from him, he never feels alone and always has someone to listen to him when he needs to talk about his problems. Working at the convenience store has also helped him relax. Sometimes it could be a little boring since nothing bizarre happened and he was scanning items and constantly interacting with customers. However, on a quiet afternoon, while stocking shelves, he heard a loud crash from the front of the store. He rushed to see what had happened, only to find a large black bear standing before him. Orlando froze, his heart racing as he watched the bear roam through the aisles, knocking over products and causing chaos. The bear's eyes met Orlando's, and he knew he was in trouble. He tried to back away slowly, hoping not to startle the bear, but it was too late. The bear charged him, and Orlando stumbled back, tripping over a cereal box. He hit the ground hard, his head spinning, as he watched the bear come closer and closer. As the bear reached him, Orlando knew he had to act fast. He grabbed a nearby broomstick and swung it at the bear, hoping to scare it away. But the bear was not deterred, and instead it swiped at Orlando with its massive paw, knocking the broomstick out of his hands. Orlando scrambled to his feet, searching for anything he could use to defend himself. He spotted a can of bear spray on the shelf and grabbed it, hoping it would be enough to stop the bear. As the bear lunged at him, Orlando sprayed the bear spray directly into its face. The bear roared in pain, and Orlando took the opportunity to run toward the back of the store. He knew he had to find a way out before the bear recovered and attacked him again. As he made his way toward the back of the store, he could hear the bear crashing through the aisles behind him. He reached the door leading to the back alley and pushed it open, stepping outside into the bright sunlight. Orlando's heart was racing and he felt sweat pouring down his face. He looked around for the bear, but it was nowhere to be seen. He knew that he had to get help before the bear returned. He ran to the nearest house and pounded on the door, yelling for someone to call for help. The homeowner answered the door and immediately called the police. Orlando was rushed to the hospital, receiving treatment for his injuries. He had several deep cuts on his arms and legs and his head was bruised from hitting the ground. However, he was lucky to be alive. The bear had not gone for his neck or head, which could have easily killed him. After the incident, Orlando quit his job at the convenience store and focused on his studies. He couldn't bear the thought of returning and facing another bear attack. He realized how close he had come to losing his life and decided to make a change. Orlando started volunteering at a local wildlife conservation center, learning about bears and their behavior. He realized that the bear that had attacked him was most likely just scared and confused, and that he had unintentionally startled it. He advocated for bear safety, teaching others how to avoid encounters with bears and what to do if they are attacked. He also raised awareness about the importance of bear conservation and humans' roles in protecting these magnificent animals. Despite his trauma, Orlando had come out of the experience a stronger and more compassionate person. He had faced his fears and found a new purpose in life, dedicating himself to protecting humans and bears. In November of 2003, on the south coast of the United States, hobbyist hunter Philip Montagna found himself in the most terrifying situation of his life. The massive forests of Kodiak Island would become the site of terror and brutality for the young hunter who came face to face with a giant Kodiak bear. In the early morning of that fateful day, Philip and some friends decided to head out into the wilderness south of the Kodiak National Wildlife Refuge to hunt Sitka deer. It was the peak of the hunting season when the deer would be plentiful and relatively easy to hunt down. Philip and his friends set up camp in a remote part of the refuge, isolated from other hunters for miles. 
The group decided to start at 6 a.m. in groups of two. There were six of them, and Philip partnered up with his longtime hunting friend, Jean. Approximately two hours and six miles later, the pair found the perfect nesting place to wait for any deer coming their way. The conditions were ideal. They were downwind from the deer, camouflaged, and completely hidden. Although waiting is tedious when you're trying to hunt, the pair stayed deadly silent while expecting the deer to arrive. After hours, a small group of Sitka deer finally showed up a few hundred yards from their nest. They waited with bated breath for them to move closer so they could get a clear shot, but they were not the only stalkers there. In the distance, Jean spotted a dark shape making its way through the forest, progressively getting larger and faster. The blood in their veins turned to ice as they realized that a massive Kodiak bear was coming straight for them. Armed with their guns and regulation bear spray, they watched, frozen in fear, as the bear came barreling out of the underbrush, mauling an unsuspecting deer, killing it instantly. Having never seen such a beast, Philip thought the best course of action would be to slowly back away and pray that the bear was happy with the deer and wouldn't set its sights on them. They did that, backing away into the tree line, back into the direction they came from. Just when they thought they were safe, they heard thumping and grunting as they saw the behemoth running toward them. Philip was the first to be knocked over, and he instinctively curled into the fetal position, protecting his neck and insides. He noted that he never felt anything as strong as that bear. The beast tossed him around with no effort and stomped on him, seemingly playing with his food. It did the same with Jean, leaving both of them wondering when their final moments would come. It stopped just as Philip felt the beast's hot breath on his neck. They learned that playing dead in situations like these would make the bear lose interest, which is precisely what happened. It slowly backed off and went back to its previous kill. Jean and Philip did not dare move for over 30 minutes, just in case the bear would come back. However, it never did come back, and the pair was left with several broken bones and cuts from the bear's claws. They never split into groups after that. Married couple Caden and Jade, along with their 16-month-old daughter Chloe, were on their way to a camping site in British Columbia using their motorized RV. The couple spent years saving up for their motorized RV because they enjoy traveling and want to experience comfortable living away from home. They also wanted their daughter to experience the joys of traveling, even if she just recently turned a year old. They want Chloe to learn to love traveling as much as they do. As they arrived at the campground, Caden parked the RV just near the lake, as Jade and Chloe went outside to walk and take some pictures. Chloe was visibly happy with what she saw. The couple was delighted to see their little daughter happy. Jade then went a few meters away near the lake to place Chloe on the ground as the little girl was learning how to walk. She then turns her camera on to record the little girl and take pictures of her while attempting to walk by taking a few steps forward. Caden sees his daughter and smiles at the sight of her trying to walk. Jade then calls Chloe by her name and motivates her to walk even more while recording it on camera. As Jade watched Chloe walk, Caden told his wife that he would arrange their belongings, including the portable chairs and grillers, so they could start with their camping experience, to which Jade agreed. Chloe falls to the ground several times, but Jade always encourages her to stand up and help herself walk. Jade then calls Caden and tells him that he needs to make some milk for Chloe, which the husband immediately obeys the second he hears. Jade then focused on Chloe, but she couldn't figure out why the little girl was pointing to something in the woods. Chloe, not knowing how to speak complete sentences yet, repeatedly utters the words mommy and teddy bear as she keeps pointing at whatever she sees in the woods. Jane was quite alarmed when Chloe couldn't stop uttering teddy bear, so she looked closely into the woods and was surprised by what she saw. It was a grizzly bear just behind a tree near their RV. Jade was so terrified that she picked Chloe up, but it was too late. The bear suddenly growled, leaped out from behind the tree, and attacked Jane and Chloe. Jane fell to the ground with her arms wrapped around little Chloe. 
The bear started to bite and scratch her back as she screamed for her husband, who was busy cooking inside their RV. When Caden heard his wife shout, he immediately got out of the vehicle and screamed in horror at what he saw. Chloe was crying as the bear aggressively growled while attacking Jane. Despite being hurt, Jane used herself to protect Chloe from the bear as she hugged the little girl tightly into her arms. Chloe was crying out loud as the bear still attacked Jane by scratching her back with its sharp claws and biting her head. Caden went inside their RV and grabbed the stun baton he'd been bringing everywhere to protect him and his wife as they traveled. He bravely goes near the bear and aims the stun baton at its neck before turning it on and electrocuting it. The bear growled in pain while flinching and decided to run away back to the woods where it came from. Jane was crying as she still held Chloe tightly into her arms. Caden was also crying as he helped his wife and daughter stand up from the ground to go to the nearest hospital. Jane suffered severe wounds on her back and head while Chloe survived without a scratch. Caden thanked Jane for protecting their daughter and promised that he'll do better in looking after them next time. Aryan is a young boy in an Indian town who's helping his sick mother sell street food. Even though he's currently busy with his studies, he always makes time to help his mother cook and sell their street food. Since his mother was sick, Aryan sometimes volunteered to cook and sell the food and let his mother rest. His mother was indeed grateful for him since he's a kind and understanding son who would do anything to help her out in their small business. Aryan frequently passes a zoo on his route to school and is constantly fascinated by the animals. Since he's swamped and hasn't had enough time, he can't check on the animals in the zoo by himself. Sometimes Aryan would tell his mother he wanted to go to the nearby zoo to see some animals, but his mother always said they didn't have enough money to afford the entry fee. Aryan always tries his best to understand their situation, but he'll sometimes wonder if he could still see the animals in the zoo up close. One day, when Aryan comes home from school, he sees his mother getting panicked over watching the news on their television. When he went to check it out, the report indicated that several animals had escaped from a zoo, which was exactly in their town. The people living nearby the zoo were advised to stay indoors until the animals were captured and put back into their enclosures. The news also announced that the escaped animals included a tiger, rhino, monkey, elephant, and an Asiatic black bear. Aryan's mother suddenly gasped upon hearing the news as she told him not to go to school the next day. Aryan argues with his mother and asks if they should still sell street food. His mother told him they should stay inside until the animals were captured. But Aryan insists they'll run out of money to spend on food once they stop selling street food, even for a day. The two suddenly decided to stop selling street food and buy a stock of groceries together the next day. They're still worried about the animals on the loose but they have to go and buy groceries or else they won't have food to eat once they stay in their house only for the next few days. The next day, Aryan and his mother woke early to prepare themselves for buying groceries. Unfortunately, Aryan's mother wasn't feeling well again due to her sickness, so Aryan decided to be the one to go outside and buy them groceries in the nearest store he could find. At first, his mother didn't want him to go, but Aryan insisted that having food stocks is essential for them to survive staying inside the house. Before leaving the house, Aryan carried the baseball bat he used when he played baseball at school. This ensures him that he has something to defend himself with if ever the escaped animals from the zoo would attack him. Aryan immediately left his house and went straight outside, seeing no sign of their neighbors around him. He takes a deep breath while firmly holding his baseball bat before leaving their home. A few people were outside, but most had something to defend themselves, including makeshift spears or batons. Every step makes Aryan a little bit more anxious, and he crosses the streets carefully to avoid running into any animals. While walking, he overheard a conversation between two men saying that the tiger, rhino, monkey, and elephant were all successfully captured a while ago, except for the Asiatic black bear. 
a very aggressive bear. Aryan became terrified when he heard the conversation and felt his knees trembling. However, this didn't stop him since the store was only a few feet away. As he neared the store, he could feel his palms sweating, making the baseball bat slide through his hands. He tries his best to hold it firmly so it wouldn't fall, even though he's now very nervous. Seconds later, he could hear the people in the store screaming and pointing at something behind him. When Aryan realized what they were up to, it was too late. When Aryan tried to look behind him, a very aggressive Asiatic black bear leaped behind him and took him face first to the ground. The baseball bat was thrown out of his hands beside him, making him feel helpless. The bear then begins to scratch his back with its sharp claws, as Aryan begs for help from the people inside the store. However, the people were too terrified to help him outside, so the store owner called the zoo where the black bear escaped. Meanwhile, Aryan continuously cries for help as the bear begins to bite his shoulders and neck, but he tries to protect his nape by covering it with his two hands. The bear wasn't showing any signs of stopping, as it kept on clawing and biting Aryan's back and shoulders. A few minutes later, the two men who Aryan had passed by a while ago came, and one of them picked up his baseball bat before smashing the bear's head with it. The black bear immediately stepped back as the other man carried Aryan while the other fought the animal with the baseball bat. Not long after, the zoo's emergency weapons team arrived and successfully captured the aggressive black bear. Aryan was also taken to the hospital due to his wounds and injuries caused by the attack. The zoo and the authorities immediately compensated for the damages caused by the black bear, including the hospital bills and even supported Aryan's mother as he recovered. Eloise had always loved the outdoors. She spent most of her weekends hiking in the nearby mountains with her loyal companion, a German shepherd named Duke. Duke had been with her since he was just a puppy, and he had grown to become her best friend and protector. Ever since Duke reached the age of maturity, Eloise enrolled him in obedience classes to enhance his behavior and grow even more attached and situated to Eloise. Enrolling Duke in obedience classes was one of the best choices for Eloise since Duke has grown into an obedient and observant dog after training. People even complimented Duke on how Duke was so obedient and had an excellent temperament, especially outdoors. Eloise and Duke set out on their usual hiking trail one summer afternoon. They had been hiking for a few hours when they heard a rustling in the bushes. Duke immediately went on high alert, barking and growling at the source of the noise. Eloise tried calming Duke down, thinking it was just a small animal. But as they continued on the trail, she realized something was wrong. The rustling was getting louder and more aggressive, and she could hear heavy breathing from the bushes. Suddenly, a large black bear emerged from the bushes, charging straight toward Eloise. She froze, paralyzed with fear. Duke, however, did not. He sprang into action, barking and growling at the bear, trying to distract it from attacking Eloise. The bear, however, was not intimidated by Duke's barking and charged straight toward Eloise. Duke did not back down. He jumped at the bear and latched onto its hind leg with his powerful jaws. The bear howled in pain, but it didn't stop. Eloise was terrified. She had never been in a situation like this before. She knew Duke was risking his life to protect her, and she had to do something to help. She grabbed a large stick and hit the bear as hard as possible, trying to get it to release Duke. The bear was momentarily stunned giving Duke a chance to let go and retreat back to Eloise's side. The bear turned its attention to Eloise and charged toward her once again. Duke, however, was not going to let that happen. He lunged at the bear once again, this time biting its face. The bear roared in pain and anger, but Duke did not let go. He bit and scratched the bear, trying to distract it away from Eloise. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the bear gave up and retreated into the woods. Eloise was shaken but alive, thanks to Duke's heroic actions. She hugged him tightly, grateful for his bravery and loyalty. She knew that without him, 
she would not have survived the attack. They made their way down the mountain, where they were met by a group of park rangers who had been alerted to the bear attack. They tended to Eloise's wounds and checked Duke for any injuries. To their amazement, Duke had only suffered a few cuts and bruises. The park rangers were amazed by Duke's bravery and credited him with saving Eloise's life. They said that they had never seen a dog act so fearlessly in the face of danger. Eloise was proud of Duke and grateful for his loyalty. From that day on, Eloise and Duke became local heroes. The park rangers even held a ceremony in their honor, awarding Duke a medal for his bravery. Eloise was touched by the recognition, but knew Duke was doing what he had always done, protecting her. Despite the near-death experience, Eloise refused to let the attack deter her from her love of the outdoors. She continued hiking with Duke, but took extra precautions this time. She carried bear spray with her and kept Duke close by her side. Duke, too, had changed after the attack. He had always been protective of Eloise, but now he seemed to be even more vigilant. He would often scan the surroundings, looking for any potential danger. Over the years, Eloise did not completely forget about the attack, but used it to her advantage to learn how to defend herself and Duke from any potential danger. They might have moved on from what had happened, but the horror of the encounter will always have a huge impact on their lives. It was a cold day, like any other day at the North Pole, when Mark saw the white polar bear before him. It was staring right at him, as if taken by surprise with his presence, and Mark was oblivious on what to do. His heart was pounding so loud that he thought it could jump out of his chest at any moment. His eyes were wide, and he felt frozen in place, unable to move. The bear started walking towards him slowly, almost cautiously, as though it would scare him away. He stayed rooted where he stood for some time, too scared to even take a step backwards. Finally, as the bear got closer, it let out a low rumble and tilted its head. The noise sent shivers down Mark's spine, and the adrenaline rushed through him. He turned around and bolted away as quickly as possible, his heart still thundering inside his chest. The bear charged after Mark, and he heard the growl right behind his back. He was running for his dear life, hoping to God that he would find a way to escape this. Soon, he felt the bear swipe and tear his clothes, barely missing his flesh, and he fell to the ground and briskly released his bag from his back, which he used as a line of defense between him and the bear. As the bear growled, he used that time to get out a can of bear spray, and he readied it. Mark looked over his shoulder and saw the bear standing just a few feet away, glaring at him. He aimed at the animal, but didn't spray the contents of the can yet. He was waiting for it to come close enough before he unleashed the can's furious content. The bear began charging again, and Mark knew he couldn't outrun it. He waited with his finger shaky on the trigger. Mark squeezed the trigger and sprayed a large amount of foam in front of him, aiming it directly at the bear. Then he waited for a reaction. He heard a yelp and looked up just in time to see the bear stumble backward a bit, surprised that it didn't get sprayed. Mark waited anxiously for the creature to charge back at him, but it remained on the side of the clearing, seemingly confused by the sudden attack from the raging spray can. This gave Mark time to catch his breath. The bear stood there with furrowed brows until the last drops of the spray had faded away. After a while, the animal turned around and walked away, leaving behind nothing but empty woods as he left. Mark took a deep breath of relief and exhaled slowly. He sat there for a moment, taking in all that had happened since they arrived here that day. Mia and her 14-year-old daughter Lucy decided to go camping in a state park in Idaho. It's Lucy's birthday and she wishes to experience outdoor camping with her mom. As a good kid and an Achiever student, Mia simultaneously grants Lucy's wish and takes her to the state park to camp for three days. Mia has always been an avid fan of the outdoors, 
and that's why she was delighted to know that her daughter's wish was to experience what outdoor camping feels like. The two hiked their way into the campground upon arriving at the state park. When they finally reached their destination, Mia taught Lucy to build a tent while setting up everything they'll need for the three-day camp. After setting up the tents and the bonfire they'll be lighting up later, the two decided to venture out into the woods, first to explore their surroundings and show Lucy how beautiful and diverse nature is here. While in the woods, the two explored their surroundings and saw many animals. They decided to take pictures and videos as part of their trip when they noticed a strange figure in one of their photos. When Mia had a look at the photo, she realized that there was a grizzly bear just around them. Mia was enthusiastic about having a grizzly bear near them since she loves reading about bears and always wanted to see one up close. However, Lucy was somewhat more scared than amazed that they caught a grizzly bear on camera. She thinks they need to head out to their campground immediately which Mia understood and it made her decide that they should return to their camp. As soon as they arrived at the camp, Lucy told Mia that she wanted to take a nap and wake up at night so she could better experience what camping feels like without feeling sleepy. Mia agreed and let Lucy first nap at the tent while she went out to the woods again to explore. Mia was convinced that Lucy was alone in the tent as she went deep into the woods to take more pictures and document everything she saw. Everything was going so well, not until she heard Lucy scream at the top of her lungs from the camp that it could be heard everywhere. Mia rushed to the camp as soon as she heard Lucy's screams, and as she arrived, she was welcomed by a horrifying sight of a black bear biting her daughter's leg and forcefully dragging her from the inside of the tent. Mia was shocked as she didn't know what to do and told Lucy to calm down as she thought of a way to deter the bear from her daughter. Lucy kept screaming and crying in pain as the black bear kept biting her leg and scratching her to keep her from squirming around. Lucy tried to kick the bear, but it was useless for the bear's enormous size. Meanwhile, Mia tries to stop panicking and think of something to scare the bear off her daughter. After a few seconds, Mia ran to the bear and decided to kick it with her bare legs. The bear growled and grew more aggressive as it scratched Mia's legs with its sharp claws, causing her to scream along with Lucy. However, this didn't stop Mia as she continued screaming, making loud noises and kicking the bear away from her daughter. The bear couldn't stop biting on Lucy's leg, making Mia think of another way. Mia went around the camp searching for a sturdy object to smash the bear with, and as soon as she started looking, she found a huge piece of wood from their bonfire and picked it up. She immediately rushed to the bear and in a second smashed it on the bear's head several times. The bear was so hurt and unable to fight back that it just ran away before receiving another hit from Mia, leaving Lucy severely wounded on the leg. Mia wasted no time and picked Lucy up and they hiked their way back to their car and took her daughter to a nearby hospital, where the doctors told her that she needs to recover for several weeks due to the wound caused by the black bear's bite. After the attack, the officials of the state park searched for the bear so they could euthanize it to better prevent the occurrence of these incidents in the future. After years of living alone, Leopold decides to go and seek accompaniment at the nearest retirement home in Colorado. He can still care for himself at 66, but can't even walk properly and support his posture without his cane. Living alone has made Leopold quite sad and lonely, so he asks for help in a retirement home just a few blocks away. Everyone in the retirement home welcomed him warmly, especially his caregiver, Ray. Since Leopold went to the retirement home and started living there, Ray has never left him and is always assured he will always be with him. Ray is a young man who wanted to work with the elderly since they're close to his heart. Besides Ray, Leopold has made many new buddies in the retirement home. They would walk together outside, play games, talk about their past lives, and even share their deepest and darkest secrets. They were all happy with each other's presence in the place, and Leopold has never felt this comfortable before. Leopold likes to wake up in the middle of the night and take night walks outside without the supervision of Ray and other caregivers. 
There were no risks while wandering outdoors at any moment because a fence surrounds the retirement home's exterior. One night, Leopold woke up once again, as usual. He glances at Ray, who fell asleep on a chair across the room after playing a guitar tune to make him sleep. Leopold smiles as he takes his walking cane and silently goes outside for a night walk. As he walks, Leopold suddenly thinks of his past life and how hard he has been living alone since his children abandoned him. He can't help but recall all of the sad memories that he had in his past. He was on the edge of tears as he walked around when he heard distant footsteps. Leopold suddenly regains his composure and checks the environment for the source of the sound. He tried calling Ray's name to see if it was him, but there was no answer. As Leopold was about to go inside, the last thing he heard before he fell face first to the ground was a loud growl. And there, a black bear went on top of his back and started attacking him. His walking cane was thrown to the ground, and the bear began to scratch his back and try to bite his head, causing him to scream to wake up the others and help him. Leopold could feel his body trembling instantly since the bear pressed all its weight against him. He tries to squirm and stand up, but the bear can only pin him down to the ground once and attack him by scratching his back with its sharp claws. He then tries to reach for his walking cane, thrown off a while ago. When Leopold finally grabbed his walking cane, he smashed it onto the bear's head to fight it. When the bear flinched, Leopold struck its head again as Ray and the other caregivers arrived. Ray immediately approached them and made loud noises to deter the bear, effectively making it run to where it came from. There, Leopold was left bloodied and hurt by the attack. Ray and the other caregivers immediately carried Leopold to treat his injuries from the bear. Luckily, Leopold survived the attack and only obtained minor puncture wounds and scratches, but he needs bed rest for recovery and has a doctor visit him very soon for advanced treatment. After the bear attack on Leopold, the retirement home management strengthened their facilities and the place's safety. Brielle was excited to participate in the annual tree planting event in the nearby forest. She had always been passionate about preserving the environment and was glad to be able to contribute in her small way. She arrived at the designated spot early in the morning, dressed in comfortable clothes and carrying a spade and a backpack containing water and snacks. Walking deeper into the forest, she marveled at the tree's beauty and the birds chirping. It was a peaceful and serene environment, and she looked forward to a productive day. She had been planting trees for a few hours when she heard a rustling sound nearby. She initially didn't pay much attention to it, thinking it was probably a small animal. But when the sound grew louder, she turned around to see a massive bear charging toward her. She froze for a moment, unable to comprehend what was happening. The bear was only a few feet away from her now, and she could see its teeth bared and its eyes fixed on her. Instinctively, Riel knew she had to act fast. She remembered reading somewhere that it was best to make yourself appear bigger than you actually are when faced with a bear. With that in mind, she raised her arms above her head and shouted as loudly as possible. However, to her dismay, the bear remained unfazed and drew closer, now only a few inches away. The next few seconds were a blur of chaos and fear. The bear lunged towards Brielle, its massive paw aimed at her face. She managed to dodge the attack, but stumbled and fell to the ground. The bear was now on top of her, growling and snarling. Brielle could feel its hot breath on her face, and she knew she had only seconds left to live. But then, something miraculous happened. A group of hikers walking nearby heard the commotion and came running in Brielle's direction. They heard her screams and immediately realized what was happening. Without hesitation, they started throwing rocks and sticks at the bear, hoping to distract it long enough for Brielle to escape. The bear was momentarily startled by the sudden onslaught of rocks, giving Brielle enough time to scramble to her feet and run for safety. She sprinted toward the hikers, still trying to ward off the bear. As she ran, she could hear the bear's angry growls and the sounds of its heavy footsteps behind her, but she didn't look back. 
She knew that her only chance of survival was to keep running until she was out of harm's way. Finally, she reached the safety of the hikers, who had managed to drive the bear away. She collapsed onto the ground, panting and trembling. It took a few moments for her to catch her breath and realize she was alive. She looked up at the hikers, who looked at her with concern and relief. Brielle was taken to the hospital to be treated for her injuries. Fortunately, they were not life-threatening, but she was severely bruised and had a few scratches on her arms and legs. The doctors and nurses were amazed that she had survived such a brutal attack by a bear. They told her she was lucky to be alive and should be grateful for the quick thinking of the hikers who had come to her rescue. After Brielle recovered from her injuries, she continued her passion for preserving the environment. She felt even more strongly about it now, knowing she had been given a second chance at life. She started volunteering at the local conservation group and became an advocate for bear safety. She wanted to make sure that no one else would have to go through what she had experienced by telling people her story and helping them be aware of the dangers when in the wild. Today is Catherine's training for her archery competition. However, there is a twist. She had to hunt a real elk to test her skills with the help of her father, Lawson, a licensed archery hunter. Catherine and Lawson decided to head to a national forest in Montana to hunt for elk. Catherine is nervous about hunting elk, but her dad convinces her to do it as he will be helping her all along the way. As the two arrived at the National Forest, they prepared their bows and arrows for hunting. Catherine was still nervous, but Lawson tried to cheer his daughter up and do well with their archery hunting today. Catherine and Lawson walk into the forest as he teaches her more about archery hunting and how to improve her aim and focus while targeting an object. Catherine listens to her father carefully, slowly forgetting about being nervous about her first elk hunt. When an elk passed by in front of them, Lawson sees this as a perfect opportunity to show his skills to his daughter. He began aiming his bow at the elk and waited for it to stay still before shooting it with his arrow. The elk began to stay still for a few seconds, making it an easy target for Lawson. He didn't waste time as he aimed his bow and quickly shot the arrow at the elk, which struck its abdomen perfectly. Catherine was amazed at her dad's archery skills. When Lawson approached her and told her that she didn't have to hunt a real elk aside from the fact that she wasn't licensed yet, but instead tested her skills by making the elk carcass her target, Catherine heaved a sigh of relief as she started to aim her bow at the dead elk for practice. As Catherine was about to shoot the arrow from her bow, a giant grizzly bear appeared from the woods and attempted to eat the elk carcass out of hunger. Lawson screamed to scare the bear away but instead it charged at Catherine and tackled her to the ground. Catherine was surprised and terrified at the same time as the bear started to claw her arms and legs. On the other hand, Lawson was also terrified as the bear aggressively attacked his daughter. He was screaming and crying in panic, as Catherine did too. Catherine's bow and arrow were also on the ground a few feet away as she tried to reach for an arrow to stab the bear. However, the bear kept putting its weight on her body as it attacked her with its claws, so Catherine couldn't take it and give up. Lawson finally regained his composure as he tried his best not to panic and aimed his bow and arrow straight into the bear's heart. His hands were shaking due to the panic he's been feeling, but this was the only way he knew to scare the bear away and save his daughter. He didn't waste any more time as he shot the arrow and struck the bear's heart in no time. Lawson pulled out another arrow and shot it into the bear's arm before it fell motionless. Lawson immediately picked wounded Catherine up from the ground as they rushed to their vehicle to take her to a hospital. Catherine's bow and arrow used for the competition were left behind in the forest. Still, it doesn't matter to Lawson now as long as she gets taken to a hospital for immediate medical attention. Ricky, Joe, and Curtis were neighbors and friends living in Kenai, Alaska. When they were all off from work, their favorite hobby together was going fishing for salmon in the Kenai River. This day, they're going to the Kenai River again to go fishing for salmon. 
Even if they had done it many times, they still wanted to hang out with each other by going fishing together. As they reached the banks of the Kenai River, Joe prepared three portable chairs to relax in when they weren't fishing. Curtis prepared some food and beer while Ricky prepared their fishing rods to be used when they were about to go fishing in a little while. The three sat on their portable chairs first while they made a toast and ate food while chatting. The three of them were having a great time as this was also their way to relax after a hard week working for their families. After eating and drinking for a while, they decided to go to the river and start fishing for salmon. They grabbed their fishing rods and went into the shallow river to start fishing. The Kenai River is always abundant with salmon, so they would all have a good catch when they're done. A few minutes passed and the three decided to rest while looking at the salmon they caught. They all shared a drink again and ate food before continuing to fish. But this time, they were confused about why they almost caught no salmon. Curtis concluded that maybe a bear was hunting for salmon in the river nearby. Ricky and Joe grew concerned as the three decided to return to the riverbank once more and rest instead. They decided to stay for another hour to see if they could catch another batch of salmon once they went to the water again. As they were resting, Ricky told Joe and Curtis that he wanted to check if there were salmon in the river again, to which the two agreed. Ricky waded through the shallow water to the slightly deeper part of the river, with a water level far above his knees. He wanted to see if there were any salmon or any other fish he could catch and bring home later. As Ricky searched for fish with his rod, a grizzly bear was silently lurking in the waters just around him. Joe and Curtis were busy drinking and talking to each other. That's why they couldn't see the grizzly bear beside Ricky at the river. Ricky decided to go back to the riverbank when he saw the grizzly bear beside him. He instinctively screamed and tried to run through the water, but it was too late. The bear immediately grabbed him by the shoulders and bit his arm, which made him scream louder than before, which Joe and Curtis had heard just now. Joe and Curtis were shocked as they could see their friend Ricky getting attacked and bitten by a grizzly bear in the river. They immediately stood up from their portable chairs and rushed to the river as they began to punch and kick the bear to rescue Ricky. The bear kept biting at Ricky's arm as it started scratching Joe's face with its claw. Blood dripped from Joe's wound on his face, but this didn't stop him. Joe and Curtis continued to punch the bear while making loud noises so that it would let go of Ricky's arm. After a few punches and kicks, Curtis found the right timing and stretched his arms out to gouge the grizzly bear's eyes with his hands, which made the bear ball out in pain and run away from them immediately, leaving the three of them bloodied in the river. Curtis helped his two wounded friends, Ricky and Joe, to get inside their vehicle and get medical help. Ricky miraculously survived even after suffering a large bite wound on his arm, while Joe had to rest for a while and get treatments for the injury on his face. After the incident, they don't know if they can continue with their favorite hobby or start finding a new one that would cause them no harm.